Cheers, guys. Epix911. Welcome to the Elitist Geek and my review of the Canon Vixia HFR 500 camcorder. This was a camera I just picked up today. As some of you know, the Sony camcorder that I have, and let me just reach back. We can use this as a, as a comparison. So that's the Sony camera. This is the HR or the SR10 Sony camera. It's got a flip screen. It was good for its day. This camera came out in, I believe, 2007, 2008. And one of my big, huge complaints with it, I've got a great 14-hour uh, battery, but my biggest complaint is that it doesn't support an external mic. There's no mic input, no 3.5 millimeter mic input whatsoever, which means that I'm stuck with the onboard uh, built-in mic which to put it bluntly sucks now I've done some research and I wasn't prepared to spend more than five six hundred dollars for a camera I could have got a digital SLR camera I could have got some other options but I wanted a camcorder so I'm gonna have a couple of aspects to this video first one is just gonna be unboxing it and you can see I've already unboxed it I just kind of cheap ass put this back to where it was but I haven't really had a chance to take it all apart yet. So, so let's take a look. So this is the um, SanDisk 8 gig that comes with it. I bought a slightly better Lexar Professional 400 times. This one is uh, basically 60 megabytes per second write speed, which is a lot better than the SanDisk that it came with, not to mention capacity. So we're gonna hold on to this. I've got all kinds of other uses for it that I can get back to. So that's the 32 gig that we'll be putting inside. All right, back to this. So this came with a camera bag, so a nylon bag. Let's put that over there. There's a separate box in here, and that's pretty much it. The rest of it is an empty box, as you can see. Let's put that over there and let's get to the goodies. All right, so we've got our typical um, manual, which comes in a multitude of other languages. Our registration card, which I will, because it does give you less hassle if you get that registration stuff all filled out. We have our adapter for power, Ooh, look at that, HDMI to HDMI mini, very nice, battery, and the camera itself, which, let's bring back the Sony, just for the sake of comparison, I can find where the hell I put it, do do do, there it is, so yeah, you can see what a difference, um, you know, in terms of size. Okay, it's probably not that apparent on the video, but trust me, the Canon is a lot, lot lighter. And that's not just with the 14 hour Mondo battery, but there we go, side, side profile shows it a bit better. This whole extra hand grip, which is kind of nice, but kind of redundant with a lot of the technology. And considering, I'm not gonna really use it as, as much as a vacation camcorder, more on a tripod. So, so there you go. And of course, the other feature that was a must for me, which the Sony had, is the flip screen, which this also has. Nothing more aggravating than filming yourself and not being able to see if you're centered, etc. So, I'll use some editing here, but I'm just going to slip some of this together here real quick. That's in. So that's the battery. Let's find out where the memory card goes. Right there. SD card. Wow, there's actually some charge. I'm impressed. Charge the battery pack. Okay, so not much, but look at that. 32 gig goes right in there. That is so sweet. 32 gig guard. I could have got the 64 gig, but best bang for the buck. I believe I paid 24. 25 Canadian for that, and it was uh, 
it was about 60 for the 64 gig. So it would have been cheaper to get two 32s. Of course, 164 saves you the hassle. But honestly, that, that's enough at this point. Maybe when there's a Canadian Boxing Day, all kind of, Boxing Day kind of like our Black, your Black Fridays, I might find that on sale. So there we go. I'm going to put all of this together, give it a charge, and we will be back filming with the Canon. Okay, guys, I'm back, and uh, I'm just going to hold my USB Yeti microphone. So let's just try to get center frame. So what I've done here is I have both my Logitech C920 and the Canon camcorder filming this. I've just piggybacked the Logitech on top of the Canon camcorder. So uh, it's not totally apples to apples because the 920 from Logitech, being a webcam, it has a bit wider field of view, as you can probably tell, um, which isn't a huge issue. But if you look at both films, which I'm going to have inset side by side so you can see them, you can see on the Canon the AT, A, and R of my Atari poster. On the Logitech, you see a little bit more of the A, sure, but part of the R is cut off. So for all intents and purposes, the, I guess what you're looking at, the right side of your frame is about on par. But if you go to the left, you can see the Canon just captures my bookshelf, the far left end of the bookshelf, and a wee bit of wall. I would say not more than about four or five inches. Whereas the Logitech C920 captures a good chunk of my window almost a third of my window plus my lighting lamp so you can see there's a bit wider field of view i'm going to run some other tests i just wanted to babble a little bit to give some footage uh, comparisons so where i am apples to apples is in color settings i've left everything default both on the logitech the only thing i've got on the logitech that i adjusted was the right light and I put the the same setting for Canon, their equivalent of the right light setting. The C920 is picking up my Blue Yeti microphone. But again, another reason I purchased the Canon camcorder was for the mic input. It does have a mic input. And yes, I have to power my Blue Yeti through my USB port. But using the headphone jack as an auxiliary, I can at least plug into the Canon as an option which I didn't have with the Sony that I showed you guys earlier. So other than that, uh, just looking at what I see on screen, the real proof is going to be in the pudding once we have it on screen. On the Canon, I have it set to MP4 format for the video format instead of AVCD. And I've also got it set to 60p, so 60 progressive frames, which is uh, an awesome setting. A couple of things to bear in mind when you use this mode on the Canon, all the filters like cinema filters, which obviously rely on a slower frame rate, are disabled, which makes sense. But it'll be interesting, I'm, I'm really, really curious to see how the color vibrancy holds up at this highest quality mode compared to your $100 webcam at its highest 1080p settings. Cheers, guys. All right, let's wrap up this video. Um, I just wanted to show you guys, because I hear a lot of people always complain about tripods. And yes, there's a difference, obviously, between cheap-ass tripods and quality tripods. There's a world of difference. But you can get good, cheap tripods. Typically, you're going to pay $100 plus for an average beginner-level tripod. We have a store here in Canada on the West Coast. I'm not even sure if they go across Canada. I'm not even sure if it's a U.S. Uh, chain as well or if it was a U.S. chain that came to Canada, but it's called Excess Cargo. And after looking, I had some requirements. It had to be adjustable. It had to have a level on it. And it had to be somewhat modular in terms of my ability to add cameras quickly to it. I don't even have a name brand on this one. But to give you an idea... It had all the features that those box store tripods had. 19 bucks. That's it. Um, the legs are swivel, can swivel. You can extend the tripod multiple lengths. I think it's up to probably six feet with just the legs. Then you've got the crank 
here to give you another at least 18 inches. Okay, your swivel, um, which would be left and right, and your, or sorry, your vertical swivel, horizontal swivel, and your vertical swivel here with this Titan grip lever. All right, and the levels that I talked about right here, and on the tripod itself, you've got additional levels. Uh, sorry, one of them is a compass. So you've got a compass, a level, uh, sorry, a compass and two levels, vertical and horizontal levels. All right. And the modular aspect that I talked about, I'm just going to put the camera tripod down. So there's a, uh, a latch here, you can see, and a base for the camera that you can screw in. And then it's just a matter of fitting it into place, letting go of the lever, and boom, your camera's in place. All right. So last look at the camera itself before I kill the video. It's got a glossy finish, which I'm not a huge fan of. I would have preferred a matte finish. That's just because I don't like fingerprints all over my stuff. I noticed that the lens cover is manual. And at first I was like, what the bleep? But then I thought about it and you know what? Mechanical ones can, or um, electric ones can fail. And to have it be a manual shutter, I kind of like that. I thought that was good. All right. Huge, huge for me is the abil ability to swivel the view so that you can film yourself. All right. I think I mentioned that in the first, but here we go. Here's the important stuff to me. Take a look at this, guys. You've got HDMI out, right? You've got USB, and they didn't throw the USB cable in. Notice they threw the mini to regular HDMI cable, which was classy. That was classy. Uh, headphone jack. And the most important feature, why I purchased this, was the external mic jack, which will allow me to hook up the Blue Yeti through its auxiliary port, which is the headphone jack that doubles as an auxiliary port. Yes. You heard that right. It doubles as an auxiliary port. So you run a cable from that to the mic jack here, 3.5 millimeter cable, and you will be able to use your Blue Yeti. Keep in mind, it must be powered, right? So if you've got a laptop, you've got a battery operated hub, if you're outside, this will work. No problem. So for me, that was huge. What else do we have here? We've got a really, really vibrant view screen. It's three inches. But man, is it vibrant. It, it's obviously LCD, but it looks like an OLED screen. It looks that good. You've got several settings you can set the camera to. I set it to the highest for the purpose of comparison, which was MP, MP4 format 60p, which is 60 progressive line, scan line. So you have no interlacing. So it's a progressive solid signal, which is also very important to me. That 32 gig card that I mentioned at the start of the video, that will give you under the highest quality settings, two hours of recording. And I'm just trying to remember what it was when I didn't have it set. It was uh, way, way higher. Um, but that's not that important for the purpose of the video. Just know that at the highest settings on a 32 gig card, you get about two hours. All right. Other options, your on off are, are in here. You've got uh, your play in here as well. No software came with it. As you saw, it was just the booklets, but I imagine you can download software. So that's not going to be an issue. The battery pack is on the back here. You've got your zoom option on the top. And uh, yeah, that's about it. That is about it. It's got a good image stabilizer I noticed as well and a, a good zoom so a 32 times optical 57 in total using digital zoom as well okay that is vixia hfr 500 camera folks i will do a second part to this video but i want the second part of the video to be driven by your feedback so if it's uh go bleep yourself feedback fine. <laughs> I think I've accomplished that without making another video. You didn't like it. You don't need to see the next one. Fair enough. But if there are things that you want to see, because I could have thrown all kinds of extra stuff in the video, like macro, 
you know, close up stuff, zooming outside, but I want that to be driven by the feedback. So if there's no feedback, I'll just leave it up at, at this first video. If you guys like to see more and specifically have me do legal stuff, I can do that. <laughs> no problem. Just let me know in the comments below. And lastly, what I wanted to say, guys, is I noticed when I had them side by side in the editing software, the Logitech 920 was pretty much on par visually, just having it up on the screen, which is to be expected. It's a you know three hundred plus dollar camcorder, so not an expensive one in terms of camcorder prices. And the Logitech, for its part, is one of the better webcams available because we've come far peeps we've come really really far i remember using some of the earlier webcams and it like it was that bad right you'd have three to 15 frames per second at 320 by 200 uh with all kinds of drops and and <laughs> varying of frames per second so to the rating we go how would i rate this well, here's how I'm going to give you my rating. And you guys know I rate stuff as worth your time or not worth your time. So that's really what it boils down to. If you're looking for an under $500 camcorder that has an external mic that can do 1080p progressive, that has a decent or better picture quality and sound quality, worth your time absolutely worth your time if you are looking for an excellent picture with excellent audio capabilities uh, plus an external mic you're probably going to want to look elsewhere all right this is strictly entry level bare bones for those types of features so that's what i'm going to leave you guys with in terms of a rating worth your time if you're looking for an under 500 with an external mic, decent picture and sound. All right, guys, <laughs> I have my beer, do not fear. As always, cheers. And let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see for a follow-up video. I will go and do that. It's piss and rain outside now, but I've got lots of places inside where I could do macro, I can do zooming, whatever that may be. Cheers, guys. Have a fantastic weekend, and we will see you on the next video.